Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is sinusoidal AC source conversion. Our objective today is to introduce a simple circuit analysis technique known as source conversion, whereby a sinusoidal AC voltage source in series with a fixed impedance is substituted for an equivalent sinusoidal AC current source in parallel with a fixed impedance and vice versa. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewer has watched the AC current sources lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Additionally, this lecture is predicated upon the belief that viewers marginally skilled in basic series and parallel AC circuit analysis, including the use of both the AC current divider rule and the AC voltage divider rule. Source conversion is a very easy circuit analysis technique that allows one to exchange an AC current source in parallel with a fixed load impedance for an equivalent AC voltage source in series with a fixed impedance without otherwise affecting circuit behavior. This technique also works in reverse. Source conversion also allows one to exchange an AC voltage source in series with a fixed impedance for an equivalent AC current source in parallel with a fixed impedance without otherwise affecting circuit behavior. The key qualifier to the above substitutions is equivalency. If the different source configurations are indeed equivalent, the variable load impedance will be unaware that the source conversion has occurred and will continue to operate as previously. Source conversion allows a degree of flexibility in circuit analysis scenarios by allowing one to employ certain circuit analysis methods in preference to others. Sometimes you want to use the voltage divider rule. Sometimes you want to use the current divider rule. Source conversion allows you this flexibility and choice. Let's first deal with converting an AC current source in parallel with a fixed impedance to an equivalent voltage source in series with a fixed impedance. Consider a 400 milliampere at an angle of 0 degrees current source in parallel with a fixed impedance of 60 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees and a variable load impedance. We should be able to swap out this parallel combination for an equivalent AC voltage source in series with a fixed impedance and the variable load should be none the wiser to the substitution. We need to solve for two properties, one the phasor equivalent voltage and two the impedance value for the alternate source configuration. To do so, first one must remove the variable load impedance to isolate the AC current source and the fixed parallel impedance. The value of the equivalent fixed series impedance you'll be happy to know is the value of the fixed parallel impedance, only the position changes. For the given circuit, this is an impedance of 60 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. Are you tracking so far? To determine the value of the equivalent voltage source, one must solve for the open circuit voltage. With the load impedance removed, the open circuit voltage will be the voltage across the fixed parallel impedance with all current traveling through it. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates this is a value of 24 volts at an angle of 0 degrees. Our equivalent source configuration is therefore a 24 volt at an angle of 0 degree voltage source in series with a fixed impedance of 60 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. If everything I've said is true, these two different source configurations will induce the same voltage drop across and current through for a range of variable load impedances. Let's say we set the variable load impedance to 120 ohms at an angle of 20 degrees. Our original configuration is a perfect setup for the AC current divider rule. We know incoming current and we know both impedances in a parallel combination of two elements. An application of the AC current divider rule demonstrates current through the variable load impedance will be 135.2 milliamperes at an angle of negative 13.4 degrees. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates voltage across the variable load impedance will be 16.2 volts at an angle of 6.6 .6 degrees. Our substitute configuration is a perfect setup for the AC voltage divider rule. We know applied voltage and we know both impedances in a series combination of two elements. An application of the AC voltage divider rule demonstrates voltage across the variable load impedance will be 16.2 volts at an angle of 6.6 .6 degrees. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates current through the variable load impedance will be 135.2 milliamperes at an angle of negative 13.4 degrees. Equivalency has indeed been maintained and the load impedance is none the wiser that the original current source in parallel with a fixed impedance 
has been swapped out for a voltage source in series with a fixed impedance. Now, when performing source conversion in circuits with more than one source, it's important to maintain original polarity. Notice the voltage source positive terminal is pointing up, as is the current source's directional arrow. These indicators imply that at the start of the analysis, the positive cycle initiates in the indicated direction. By respecting polarity and direction, this ensures that the variable load impedance experiences the same direction of current flow as a function of time for both configurations. Let's try the reverse operation and learn to convert an AC voltage source in series with fixed impedance to an equivalent AC current source in parallel with a fixed impedance. Consider a 72 volt at an angle of zero degree voltage source in series with a 750 ohm at an angle of zero degree fixed impedance in series with a variable load impedance. We should be able to swap this out for an equivalent AC current source in parallel with a fixed impedance and the variable load impedance should be none the wiser to the substitution. We need to solve for two properties. One, the phasor equivalent current and two, the impedance value for the alternate source configuration. The value of the equivalent fixed parallel impedance, you'll be happy to know, is the value of the fixed parallel impedance. Only the position changes. For the given circuit, this is an impedance of 750 ohms at an angle of zero degrees. Tracking so far? To determine the value of the equivalent current source, one must remove the variable load impedance and solve for the short circuit current. When a low impedance short circuit is placed across the load terminals, only the fixed series impedance opposes a voltage source. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates that this is a value of 96 milliamperes at an angle of zero degrees. Our equivalent source configuration is therefore a 96 milliampere at an angle of zero degree current source in parallel with a fixed impedance of 750 ohms at an angle of zero degrees. If everything I've said is true, these two different source configurations will induce the same voltage drop across and current through for a range of variable load impedances. Let's say we set our variable load impedance to 480 ohms at an angle of negative 15 degrees. Our original configuration is a perfect setup for the AC voltage divider rule. We know applied voltage and we know both impedances in a series combination of two elements. An application of the AC voltage divider rule demonstrates the voltage across the variable load impedance will be 28.3 volts at an angle of negative 9.2 degrees. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates current through the variable load impedance will be 59.0 milliampers at an angle of 5.8 degrees. Our modified configuration is a perfect setup for the AC current divider rule. We know incoming current and we know both impedances in a parallel combination of two elements. An application of the AC current divider rule demonstrates current through the variable load impedance will be 59 milliampers at an angle of 5.8 degrees. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates voltage across the variable load impedance will be 28.3 volts at an angle of negative 9.2 degrees. Equivalency has indeed been maintained and the load impedance is none the wiser that the original voltage source in series with a fixed impedance has been swapped out for a current source in parallel with a fixed impedance. There's really not a whole lot more I can say about source conversion other than this. Pause the lecture and take a shot at converting these sources into their other world equivalents. If it's a voltage source in series with a fixed impedance, swap it out for an equivalent current source in parallel with a fixed impedance. If it's a current source in parallel with a fixed impedance, change it to an equivalent voltage source in series with a fixed impedance. Ensure equivalency is maintained by solving for the voltage across the load and the current through the load impedance in both configurations. Ideally, either configuration will induce the same voltage drop and current through the given load impedance. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Our first illustrated example features a 60 volt at an angle of zero degree voltage source in series with a fixed impedance of 500 ohms at an angle of zero degrees, supplying a variable load impedance currently set at 900 ohms at an angle of 12 degrees. With the variable load impedance removed, an application of Ohm's law demonstrates the short circuit current will be 120 milliampers at an angle of zero degrees. Therefore, a current source of 120 milliampers at an angle of zero degrees in parallel the fixed 500 ohms at an angle of zero degree impedance should behave identically. As proof of this equivalency, our original configuration is a perfect setup for the AC voltage divider rule. We know applied voltage, and we know both impedances in a series combination of two elements. An application of the AC voltage divider rule 
demonstrates voltage across the variable load impedance currently set at 900 ohms at an angle 12 degrees will be 38.8 volts at an angle 4.3 degrees. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates current through the variable load impedance will be 43.1 milliampers at an angle of negative 7.7 degrees. Our modified configuration is a perfect setup for the AC current divider rule. We know incoming current and we know both impedances in a parallel combination of two elements. An application of the AC current divider rule demonstrates current through the variable load impedance currently set at 900 ohms at an angle of 12 degrees will be 43.1 milliampers at an angle of negative 7.7 degrees. A subsequent application of AC Ohm's law demonstrates voltage across the variable load impedance will be 38.8 volts at an angle of 4.3 degrees. Equivalency has indeed been maintained and the variable load impedance is none the wiser to the substitution. Our second illustrated example features a 60 milliampere current source in parallel with a fixed impedance of 470 ohms at an angle of zero degrees, supplying a variable load impedance currently set to 200 ohms at an angle of 24 degrees. With the variable load impedance removed, an application of AC Ohm's law demonstrates the open circuit voltage will be 28.2 volts at an angle of zero degrees. Therefore, a voltage source of 28.2 volts at an angle of zero degrees in series with a fixed impedance of 470 ohms at an angle of zero degrees should behave identically. As proof of this equivalency, our original configuration is a perfect setup for the AC current divider rule. We know incoming current, we know both impedances in a parallel combination of two elements. An application of the AC current divider rule demonstrates current through the variable load impedance will be 42.9 milliampers at an angle of negative 7.1 degrees. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates voltage across the variable load impedance will be 8.6 volts at an angle of 16.9 degrees. Our modified configuration in contrast is a perfect setup for the AC voltage divider rule. We know applied voltage and we know both impedances in a series combination of two elements. An application of the AC voltage divider rule demonstrates voltage across the variable load impedance will be 8.6 volts at an angle of 16.9 degrees. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates current through the variable load impedance will be 42.9 milliampers at an angle of negative 7.1 degrees. Equivalency has indeed been maintained and the variable load impedance is none the wiser to the substitution. All right, that's about it for now. We'll make use of source conversion in later circuit analysis scenarios. It's a simple and effective means of making circuits easier to visualize and analyze. If you overwhelmingly prefer series circuits in the voltage divider rule to parallel circuits in the current divider rule or vice versa, you have my permission to do a source conversion and make it happen using whichever technique you prefer. As we demonstrated, either configuration should yield identical results. That's the point. In conclusion, this lecture presented a circuit analysis technique known as source conversion. Source conversion allows a degree of flexibility in circuit analysis scenarios and allows one to employ certain circuit analysis methods in preference to others. Remember to review this material as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.